Hey guys, welcome to question FM 285 of the Further Maths Fortify Study Guide. This question starts off with giving us this diagram minus some of these uh, little marks that I've put in here for our earliest and latest starting times, uh, which we'll do in a second. Uh, the information we're given says eight activities S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z must be completed for a project. The graph above, uh, sorry, the graph above shows these activities and their usual duration in days. The duration of each activity can be reduced by one day. In order to complete the, the in order to complete this project in eight in fifteen days, what is the minimum number of activities that must be reduced by one day? So we're looking for the minimum uh, reduction in activities that we can make in order to still finish <clears throat> in fifteen days. So a good sort of first port of call is going to be for us to go through the current network and see where we have float days, uh, how many days it takes us at the moment, and where we can start making a few reductions. So uh, moving through this from the start, we've got these three activities, S, T, and U, are all gonna have earliest starting times of zero. From here, it's probably best that we look at the activities that come out of T, given that they will connect up with the ones coming out of S and U uh, in a moment. So W is gonna have an early start starting time of seven, given that activity T will take seven days to complete. X will also have an earliest um, starting time of seven. V will have an earliest starting time of seven also. So now having a look at activities Z and Y, so Z has two potential starting times, either seven plus eight, being 15 days, or 13. Now, of course, we're gonna take the longer of the two. We're gonna take that uh, 15 days, and that's going to be our earliest start time there. And for Y, our two potentials are 11 or 13. So we are going to take the 13 there. Uh, now looking at our finishing position, we're either going to finish on day 16 after X, day 17 with Y, or day 17 with Z. So Y and Z both finish on day 17, X would finish on day 16, we're going to take once again the larger of the two. So at the moment, our project takes 17 days to complete. Working this backwards, if we take 4 away from our 17, we've got 13. If we take two away from our 17, we have 15. And if we take nine away from our 17, we get eight. Moving backwards from here, taking eight away from our 15, we should get an answer of seven. Taking 13 away from our 15, we should get an answer of two. Getting, taking away, uh, so looking over here now, so moving backwards from activity Y, if we take six away from our 13, we should get seven. And if we take 11 away from our 13, we should also get two. Our last activity, activity T, uh, we've got seven days working backwards from V or seven days working backwards from W, which either way is gonna land us at zero here. So having a look uh, at our network now, we can see that our critical path, uh, we actually have two critical paths and they move like this. So what we need to do here is reduce our overall completion time of this project by two days. Now what you'll notice is that U and S both have float times of two days, which means that we're actually not going to need to reduce either of these two uh, because we're going to be able to reduce the whole project time uh, by two days in order to get down to a 15. So because we've got two float days here, we don't need to reduce S or U. So it makes most sense for us to initially at least reduce T by one day. So if it can be reduced by one day, we're gonna reduce T by one day. And this is because anything that comes after T, its float time won't be increased or decreased. So. For example, here, uh, X, which has a float time of one, will keep that float time of one day because T comes before it and we're reducing that. So our overall completion time, having reduced T by one day, should be 16 days. And we'll have one day of float time on S and one day of float time of U, on U. 
uh, because they're not affected by tea being reduced by one day, but everything else that comes after tea uh, is it's going to keep its float time and keep its original times as well. We now have a choice uh, where we need to reduce everything by one more day, which means we need to reduce either V or Y by one day. I'm going to choose to reduce V by one day. Um, and that would change this critical path here to being 15 days long. Or we can reduce, uh, sorry, not uh, or, but we can reduce V or uh, Y to achieve that. And because that's happening, because we've got 15 days of work happening along this critical path, we must also reduce this critical path down to 15 days. So we can choose either W or Z to reduce by one day. I'm gonna choose W and make that seven days instead. So all up, we have three days being reduced by one day. And now filling in the rest of it, let's do another forward and backwards scan uh, and see if we land on 15 days or whether there's anything else we need to reduce. Once again, starting from the start, we've got early starting times for S, T, and U of zero. Moving up to the activities following activity T, uh, they're each gonna have an earlier starting time of six days now, as opposed to the seven we had before. Jim is gonna have an early starting time of six. Cool, now looking at activity Y, uh, T, is six days long and V is five days long, so meaning that uh, that's gonna take 11 days long here. It's also gonna take 11 days to complete S. So either way, we're looking at an early starting time for activity Y of 11. Uh, activity Z is either going to take six plus seven or 13 days along T and W, uh, which is the same as the 13 days it would take along activity U. So either way, an early starting time of 13. And looking at our finishing position, if we finish along X, we've got an early starting time of six, add the nine that X will take, that's 15 days. Good. And looking at activity Y, early starting time of 11, it's gonna take four days, also 15 days to completion. And activity Z, early starting time of 13, going to take two days, also 15. So all of these paths also have 15 in it. And if we work them all backwards, what you'll see is that now every activity is actually along the critical path. Every activity has been brought to that critical path. It's going to take us 15 days to complete it. And we've done it with only reducing, I shouldn't actually say three activities. So the minimum, sorry, three days, I should say three activities. So we reduced Activity T, activity V, and activity W. We could have replaced V with a reduction in Y or W with a reduction in Z. Either way, you should still get this answer. All right, guys, so hopefully that answers all the questions for you there. This is a tricky one, so if you do have any more questions, please drop them in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.